<laughs> Hi there, this is Susie Powers. We are doing a corrective color class today. And we have a beautiful head of hair here that we are looking to remove the green. And our goal is anywhere from a light, pale pewtered gray to something a little more silver. And so we are going to go through the consultation process, analyze the hair, and understand the steps of the service and what we're looking to achieve today. All right, so we'll get started. You want to show a visual of where we're looking to go? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm totally not All right, here. Here we go. go. All right. So we'll give a good look there. That's the dream world where we would like to go. So for those of you out there that have a lot of funky colored clients that look for change, um, thank goodness for the blank canvas from Pulp Riot. And we're also going to play around with Joyco's, what's the protocol? I can't remember the name. Erase, eraser. Eraser, eraser, we're thinking. Don't, don't <laughs> blank us on the name there. Um, so for me, when I'm originally going through and starting to meet a client and really understand the process and what we're going to go through, we've got to start with hair analysis. And I'm old school. I will do elasticity tests. Get an understanding of how strong the hair is, how much strength is in there, how much moisture is in there, what the density is overall. When you're looking at the natural, she's got a good texture, you know, I would say medium to a little bit of a coarser texture. It's really, really feels great. And just going over the top layer to feel for porosity, do I feel bumpy, open, swollen, dry, brittle? No, I don't. The other thing I look for is, do I see green and then lime and then light and then pale? I don't. The colors holding consistency from where it starts down through the ends. And so those are really good signs that we have a good quality head of hair. It's not overly dry. It's not overly weak. And that's a great start to what we're about to do, being that we're going to have to go through and strip out this color. And when we're dealing with funky color, you got to remember that we're dealing with an irregular molecule size. It's not normal. And so it doesn't come out easily. And so that's why I'm grateful we have something like blank canvas that actually goes through and knows how to remove this molecular structure in a more gentle way than just lightener. What I've found in the past is bleaches have a tendency to take this color and push it further into the hair shaft. Ooh. So something like blank canvas releases it and pulls it out without having to fight with it, which is great for our world. Um, so we have, it, this is wet, wet from the shower this morning, maybe the rain outside because it's raining like crazy. Shower, quick, quick, quick shower. So typically yeah. with an elasticity test, I'll go through on the finer hair, the hair that maybe gets tucked more, curled more, touched more, worked, so that I can really see where we're at. And an elasticity test, I'll typically have wet hair for the elasticity because the hair stretches more when it's wet, right? 40 to 50% when it's wet, only 10 to 20% when it's dry. So it gives me a truer read when it's wet. An elasticity test is really just gonna reaffirm what I'm seeing with the color and the quality of the hair. I take my two thumbs with about 10 strands and just stretch and let the hair return. And this hair is returning beautifully. If it were to stretch and snap, that would tell me that the hair is really dry. If the hair would have stretched and kept on stretching, that would tell me that it's really weak and it's holding on to too much moisture because the moisture is actually allowing it to seep away, right? If it were to have stretched and then came back and coiled, that tells me that it's weak. That tells me that the elasticity, the strength in it is all gone doesn't have the ability to hold on to the strength of the hair. None of that happened. It stretched and returned beautifully. So we're starting out with a dream corrective color, of course, right? And you're all thinking, why doesn't she get a horrible head of hair like I get sitting in my chair, right? So <laughs> something overworked and overdone, right? So for us right now, it looks great. We're gonna be able to put our color remover on there. And what we're looking to do is obviously, we wanna go up to a light, light, light to be able to give a nice, soft gray silver tone so we really need to bring all this green out so we're going to be applying product going through and lifting all the green out and taking it up as best we can to a pale blonde always calling the line when the hair is getting weak and getting dry 
So if I start looking in, if we choose to put it in packets, or if I start seeing in the saran, or if I'm doing a, you know, a bleach and tone type application, if I start seeing the hair getting swollen and weak, and it looks like a wet noodle, or it looks like cotton candy, it's time to pull the product off. You, you can't continue to lift because we will break the hair off. We will make it into mush. Nobody wants mush. Um, for those situations where, let's say this was weaker. Let's say she didn't want to cut her hair off. Let's say that we wanted it all done today. I'm not a magician. That's not necessarily a realistic expectation. Why? She has at least medium brown hair here. And so to be able to get virgin medium brown hair and ends that have been lightened and green all up to a silver, I would not promise her anything less than at least three to four visits to be able to lift all of it up, get the pigment, contributing pigment that's gonna lift out of this hair, and also maintain the quality of the hair as I was lifting this. So for her in that kind of scenario, it would be a four service minimum, I would rather, you know, under promise and over deliver if I got it done in two services or three score. But honestly, I will then map out what it's going to take. So what we have to realize here is we'd be doing a bleach and tone process on the virgin hair, whereas we'd be needing a color stripping product on this. So we'd be essentially doing two whole different services, which is a lot of time. And it would be really to protect this area from the product that you're going to be needing to do on this area. Foils would be best so that we could divide those two sections of the hair. But really looking at lifting this and getting this up to a pale blonde and lifting this and getting all the green out of it. Treatments would be happening after we did the lifting process. And obviously the goal would be to take it to pale with the desire that we're going for and then we do treatments on it to make it strong enough and moist enough to be able to take the tone of that silver toner that we chose to do. So it would be an all day process working on the two different situations, right? For today, are we looking to bring any of it up more or is it really playing around with the green that we have that we want to turn silver? Do we know? I think we should bring it up a little bit. Okay. I mean, the picture, I like the idea that she's a little darker here. I do too. Like so maybe it uh, working with her natural. Okay. And okay, I like that too. Because like right here, it's really dark. It is. It so is. up here, and then maybe like bringing it up. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Yep, melt it up she's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy. I think that'd be great too. So our first step's going to be to we'll section the hair off into four sections. That's to allow us to work in a nice controlled setting. And we're gonna get the product on for the blank canvas on the green. And we're gonna start working with that inside foils in our four sections. And then from there, we'll start melting up some, some uh, foils that we can really bring up that color a little bit more with a different product in different foils so that we're addressing um, what we need to be done on the ends and what we need to be done on the roots. If we take a section like this here, where we know we want to add lightener up here to lift, what I would do is sandwich the foil packet. So I would take a foil packet underneath and then place another foil packet on top so that the two products don't melt together and marry. That's what I would do to accommodate that. So that's what we'll do off the top as we go through these areas and do the blank canvas underneath. And we're looking to bring this pale as we can get and we're looking to melt up these colors as pale as we can get and we'll call the line when the hair calls the line. Integrity okay. first, right? Okay? My hair's pretty strong. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> it looks really strong. And I would say that, you know, we do our lifting, we process, then we do a treatment just for good measure, and then we put our tone on there. And always a good idea to seal over the top. So we'll, we'll see how we start lifting, and then we'll go from there. What questions do you guys have? Do you have questions? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> does that sound like a good start? It does. Yeah. It sounds All like right. a great start. <laughs> we'll get back to you. <laughs>